Hi guys, today I'm gonna show you how to model this modern sofa, using subdivision modeling techniques in SketchUp. I will mainly use three essential plugins from Thomas Thomason, which are, SubD, Vertex Tools, and Quad Face Tools. I will also use some other plugins along them, which also play nice with quads and subdivision workflow. So, why subdivision modeling? Yes, for sure, you can achieve this same shape in SketchUp with many techniques, using various plugins. Let's say, you may want to use a mix of curvy loft, bezier splines, or maybe extrude by rails, from TIG's extrusion tools. And follow an approach based on splines, and patches. I think for the seating, you could also use Frito's round corner plug-in, which is extremely handy when it comes to chamfer or fillet edges. This approach is good. If you need accuracy. Let's say you want to actually produce this sofa, with accurate real-world dimensions. But, here, I'm focusing more on a rendering and visualization oriented approach. So, let's see why the subdivision modeling workflow is actually more efficient in a rendering pipeline. There's plenty of good reasons we could discuss, but let's take a couple of basic examples, just to clarify. Let's turn on the visibility of hidden geometry. Look at this meshes, if I toggle subdivision off, you can see how it's a rather simple mesh, with a small amount of polygons, which controls the flow of the whole shape. So, you see, I can increase and decrease subdivisions, which is very useful in rendering because you can adapt the resolution of the polygons to the needs of your actual view. Let's say you need a close-up of this sofa, or maybe you need to render an object or a character which lays on top of it, then you can rise your subdivision level. And you see, your edges here, are much better now and you can render a nice close-up of this. If you toggle on the visibility of your hidden geometry you can see how much more triangles it creates. Very quickly. Actually not so quick because I have the recording software activated, which also drains hardware power from SketchUp but you still don't have to manually rebuild it, if you need some more resolution. You know, rebuild loft, and splines from scratches in SketchUp, is bloody painful. Now, let's say I want to reuse this model for another scene. A larger one. Let's pretend that I need some of this sofas for a large hall render. Maybe in hotel reception. Let's copy around a bunch of them. You see, the scene becomes pretty heavy, but you actually can't see that much difference from this point of view. So you can jump back to a lower subdivision level, because basically they will look the same from long distance. But they will render faster because your render engine have to load a lot less triangles, as you can see here. Okay, let me erase this. Another big advantage in subdivision modeling, is that you can quickly tweak your mesh by moving, or adding very few edges and vertices in the low poly control cage. Let's toggle sub D off for a while. Now, edit the control mesh a bit. And let me quickly add a bit of geometry here and turn sub D back on. As you can see, small edits on the low poly control cage, produce great impact on the complex smoothed mesh. This would require a lot more time, with other modeling techniques. Let me undo this. Another very important thing you can see, if you edit one of this meshes and activate this quad face tool select tool is that the whole mesh is composed out of a grid of quads, which is best for almost everything. One benefit that you can immediately see, is that it makes easy to quickly select the geometry, by loops. Or by rings. But we will cover this in detail further. There's plenty of resources on the web about the benefit of quad modeling and good topology, so if you search further about this, you will learn that quad meshes are more predictable, and produce clean smoothing, are easier to UV map or to unwrap. Quads are better for displacement. For 3D sculpting, such as ZBrush or Mudbox. You know. For deformation. 
mesh animation and so on. In fact many other modeling software such as 3ds Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, Lightwave, Blender, ZBrush, just to name a few, are more quad modeling oriented. On this matter quad face tools also provide SketchUp with an OBJ exporter and importer, which preserves quads, so you can efficiently fit and collaborate into an high-end rendering or animation workflow, in which these other quad based modeling software are pretty much the standard. But let's get back to our sofa. So, I will still show you how to use some of the classic techniques I listed before, such as splines, and maybe some loft, but, we will keep things as much low poly as possible, to create a quite simple cage. And then, we will use sub D, to smooth everything out. The sofa we are going to model, is called the Tatlan sofa, and it comes from Medra. So I googled it, to find some reference images. And I found some photos, and a couple of simple 2D drafts of it. Actually they are not so much detailed and you can see also that the top view and the front view, doesn't line up perfectly. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I think that's good enough. Moreover we will also use this photo, as a further reference. As you can see, I arranged them in 3D space, as a reference, I will not cover this part. I'll assume that you know how to properly arrange and scale reference images. If you don't, there is plenty of good tutorials which cover how to do this. So maybe you can google for this. Or you may want to, to try and search tutorials about how to model a car, because pretty much all the car tutorials out there, starts from the proper image placement. Okay. I will also assume that you just have got a basic sketch up knowledge, so you must know how to work with basic tools such as move, copy, rotate, how to manage groups, components, scenes, and so on. I will also assume that you know how to toggle between perspective and orthographic view and how to manage model visibility, when working inside a component. As you can see, actually I do this by a custom toolbar. Now, I see that this can be a bit confusing for beginners, because I use a couple of plugins to build custom toolbar, one of this, actually contains a few of this useful extra button, to toggle perspective, components visibility, hidden geometry, and more. I will also use a lot of this other custom toolbar here in which I grouped many of this polygon modeling tools I use the most, such as Sub-D, Vertex Tools, and the tools from Quad Face Tools I use most frequently. I called it Edit Poly because I also use 3ds Max a lot and actually this kind of tools and 3ds Max are grouped in a panel named Edit Poly, so that's familiar for me. This custom toolbar plugins, will be hopefully listed down in the YouTube description, so you can find and download them, if you like them. Also will be added links to all the other plugins I will eventually use for this tutorial. Most of them are free, a couple of them are commercial. But you will find they are pretty cheap and you will see they are actually well worth the money. Anyway, you can use the default toolbars, which contain pretty much the same buttons I will use, if you can't see the toolbars once installed the plugins, you could check here in view, toolbar, and activate them one by one. Here you go. So, Vertex Tools. Sub D Quad Face Tools Bezier Toolbar Curvy Loft Split Tools Okay, I don't need these, so let me close them. I could probably use another couple of plugins. One to weld segments into one curve. I have this assigned to keyboard shortcut W and one more plugin. to generate a face from a closed set of coplanar edges. I have this assigned to the shortcut control plus F, so I don't need to redraw an edge, to create a face. Both for weld and create face, there are a lot of plugins which do this sort of things. Sort of duplicates. So you can pick the ones you actually like the most. Okay. 
I think that's all you need to know before following the actual short series of modeling tutorial about this sofa, so we can take this model to the side, as a further reference. I'll create a new layer called Old Model. And put this on that layer, to toggle its visibility. So, in the next parts of this tutorial, we will see how to create this from scratch. Thank you for watching.